We'll get started. Uh, I'm Rich Eubanks. Uh, some of you may not know me. I'm actually a senior this year at Alva High School. Uh, so go, go, Bugs. Uh, it's actually homecoming tonight, so I hope to see a bunch of your guys' bright, shiny faces at the game tonight. Uh, a little background to myself before I get started on what I came to talk to you guys about today. Uh, I'm currently the FFA president, the student council president, the National Honor Society president. I'm an EG speech and debate theater key club, football, basketball, and I was an officer in my junior year. And so uh, looking back on things, in middle school, I was kind of the nerdy kid, sat at the back of the room, had glasses, nobody really knew who I was. Uh, and so if you would have asked me if I knew that I was going to go on and do a bunch of things, and not only just do them, but do them to the best of my ability and have the successes I had, I'd have called you crazy. I would have told you that that would never happen in anyone's wildest dream. But uh, I always knew that I wanted to do three things. I wanted to make my family happy, and I wanted to make myself proud and my community proud with the talents that I was given by uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so that kind of goes into what I was asked to come here and talk to you guys about today, is setting goals and being the best you that you can be, continuing to advance yourself and everything that you do. Um, some of us naturally come by with advantages that others do not have. Uh, some of us are really good at setting goals. We know what we want to do. We know what we love. We know what it's going to take to get there. But uh, some of us, some of us don't really have that ability. Uh, you don't have to be a genius to set goals, but you do have to think smart. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about SMART goals and uh, really planning them out. It's an acronym. Uh, so we'll start with the S, is be specific. You have to go out and you have to find your passions. Uh, some of you guys are really good and some of you really enjoy theater or choir. Some of you really like sports or maybe you're really, really good in the classroom. Regardless of what you're good at, follow it with your whole heart. Don't do anything halfway. Uh, some of you, how many of you guys are on a farm or your parents' farm and ranch? Okay, see, there you go. So you guys naturally will come by with a great work ethic. Farm kids usually have the best work ethic. And so you guys got to have that ingrained and that idea that you're not going to go out and you're not going to do something halfway. You're going to put the best of your abilities in and you're going to get better every day. You've got to really push yourself because you know who your hardest opponent is? It's not the person sitting next to you. It's not the fastest kid in the class. It's not the smartest kid in the class. It's, it's yourself. That's exactly right. So to make sure that you are the best you that you can be, you have to be specific. Now. I know we're in middle school and I had no idea what I wanted to be in middle school. I still have no idea what I want to be as I get older. So what you got to do is you got to go out and what my approach was, was I was going to do everything. I was going to get in every single group and I was going to do the best I could in every single group and wait until one just stuck out to me. Well, none of them really stuck out to me, so I just stayed in every single group. And so with that comes time management. But what I'm getting at with this point is you really got to search out, you got to go, you got to try everything. And you got to see what you're really interested in. What you're, and maybe you're not the best at it, but you know you really enjoy it. So just keep doing that and keep making yourself better. Because uh, I'm going to quote, just a second, I got a quote here for you. I'm going to quote Mark Twain. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. And so basically what Mr. Twain was talking about with this is that one day you're going to have that aha moment. You're going to know what you want to do and you're going to keep pursuing it. So go out, get active, and get involved in your school and your community, and just do the best you can in everything you do. So that's the S. Then we move on to the M. Your goals must be measurable. You need to measure so you know when you reach your goals. You can't just sit there and say, all right, I'm going to do this, and not, then not track your progress, because how do you know if you're doing anything? Um, those who are truly successful never stop chasing their goals. They never stop measuring. They get to one goal and they go, okay, let's take it a step farther. Let's take it a step farther. So from the M we go to A and it must be attainable. How are you going to accomplish it? And never sell yourself short on your goals. You want to make sure, uh, in one of the videos, I believe, Ms. Jones said she wanted to be an All-American her freshman year. Hey, go for it. But you need to set parameters to know what you got to do, how you're going to get there, Dream big. Uh, another famous quote, and this is kind of a girly one, so uh, you never know. You girls might want to tweet this later on. But don't tell me to reach for the stars if there's, foots on the, if there's footsteps on the moon. And basically what that's saying is keep chasing your dreams. 
Don't tell, there's never a stopping point if you're truly going to be successful. So from there we go to relevance. Is it worthwhile? Is the goal and the things that you want to do with your life, are they really worth doing? You know, So don't be sitting in class one day and, I mean, it's fine. If your dream job is to work at McDonald's, be the best patty flipper that there's ever been. But if your dream is to be the president of the United States, then go out, do your best, be the best campaigner, and just put everything you have into everything you do. And then a T is a time frame. Now, how many of you guys like to wait till the last second before you turn any of your assignments in, do any of your homework, or uh, finish a project? <laughs> okay, so that's called procrastination. And uh, a lot of us would say we put the pro in procrastination. Um, now, sometimes it works out for us. Sometimes we get by, and we may even do a lot better than we thought we would. But sometimes we're very disappointed. Uh, I know I've had a few times that I've come home with really bad grades on papers, and uh, my parents were pretty mad at me. Um, so don't procrastinate is what I'm telling you. Uh, especially if you want to be truly successful in life, you can't put things off till the last second. Go out, and get it done, and do it to the best of your ability with the given amount of time. Make sure you have some time to have fun, but in the big picture, keep continuously putting things off to the last second isn't the best way to go about things. And you don't have to do all this stuff alone. A life of service is the most fulfilling way to live. So don't just do it yourself. Do it to better everyone else around you. Ronald Reagan once said, no one can help everyone, but everyone can help someone. I challenge you all to find that person that needs your help. So I hope that I've kind of touched base with you a little bit on how to set goals. Just make sure you're specific, you measure your goals, they're attainable, they're relevant, and don't procrastinate. Your teachers will thank you. So do more. God bless you out of the middle school, and thank you guys for having me come out and talk to you today. Does anybody have any questions for Ridge? Yes, Ms. White? Uh, my sixth grade year, I know I was a little bit of a procrastinator. Um, I think I missed out on a couple of the... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I never thought that reading was really that important. And then, and then it kind of hit me like a brick wall. And I was like, wow, I'm starting to get behind. I really need to get it. Because I always had that competitive feeling. So, so yeah, at first, I had to learn the lesson the hard way. So take it from me. Don't put off accelerated reader. It's very important. Reading, I love reading now. It's crazy to think. You're going to love reading someday. You're going to want to do it a lot. So uh, don't put that off. It's something great and a great skill to have in the future. Yeah. <laughs> I need to pay me. Does anybody have any questions about anything within reason? Uh, we have a little bit of time. Would you tell us about when you went to, was it Nashville? Nashville, yeah. Or uh, not Nashville, but... Uh, Louisville. Louisville. Tell us about that. Okay, so uh, I'm blessed to be the president of the FFA chapter here in Alva, Oklahoma. And so I was actually given the opportunity to sing with the National FFA Chorus in Louisville, Kentucky for National Convention. And so what that entails is you have to have been in the state chorus the year, the, the year you're applying, and then you take another application contest where you sing, and then you send it off, and then uh, college professors in music listen to your singing, and they pick, I think, 80 kids from the entire country to come in and sing and perform for over 60,000 people for each show. And so uh, not only was I blessed in the opportunity to get to do that, this was my second year to do it, but I was also a featured soloist for one of the songs. Uh, so I would have never dreamed that I would have been able to stand up in front of 60,000 people, sing with a smile on my face as confidently as I did. But uh, that just goes back to the whole goals, chasing your dreams and knowing what you love. I love music. I love performing. And uh, who would have ever thought that you, know, you could mix agriculture and the performing arts and singing into one thing? So uh, just, I'm not going to go off on FFA and tell you all the things it has to offer because it's a great organization. So I saw some of you guys wearing your jackets. Go blue. Um, but just find what you love. And you never know what doors are going to open up to you. And sometimes they're not going to work out. 
I know I tried out for all state chorus uh, my sophomore year and I didn't make it. And so at the time I was like, okay, I'm a bad singer. I'm never going to do anything musical wise because I mean, I didn't make all state. That, that means I'm not good. But then I turn around and then I make a national chorus. So it's all about perspective. It's all about face taking adversity and things that hold you down and then turning them into positives because as every door closes, another one opens. Uh, so that was, I got to spend a week in Louisville. Uh, I got to, I have friends all over the country. Just about every state I go to, there's somebody I know there. Um, it's a great opportunity. And that's one of the things, if you're not a very social person, it's understandable. But just know that the more people you know, the greater it is later in life because you're just going to run into people you know all the time and you're just going to be so surprised like you had no idea. It's a small world. We're all interconnected. Everything from social media to just traveling, you're going to run into people you know. So uh, I encourage you all to be uh, very active. Talk to one another. Make friends with one another. I know we're lucky we live in Alba and everybody knows everybody, but really get to know everybody. So that's a little bit about what Louisville. What goals do you have for the spring as you get ready to graduate? Goals for the spring. Uh, I was recently, um, I was admitted to Oklahoma State University, go Pokes. So uh, a lot of that, I'm really excited about that. And I'm also putting my name in for a state candidacy for FFA for on the state level. And so uh, Ms. Walker and I have been working on that. I go through NOMCOM in February. So hopefully I make it through that. And then if I'm an officer, I'll get to tour around the state. I'll probably get to come talk to you guys some more. I know, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm, really, I'm really hoping to get that done. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to go to Oklahoma State. I'm going to pursue my career. I'm going to go into the School of Agribusiness. Uh, some of the other goals is just spending more time with family. Um, some of you may know my sisters, but uh, we're separated right now school-wise, and so uh, never take family for granted and time you get with family and friends for granted because you never know when that's going to be taken away. Uh, always be thankful and never be apathetic. Apathetic is in never feel like you're entitled to everything because you never know when your last day is going to be. I'm not trying to get sentimental or depressive, but so that's just kind of the goals for me is uh, to get into college, get started in college, brace myself. Uh, wait, you said spring. Sorry, I got off. I, got, I was thinking later down the road. Uh, you'll learn that as you get older, you start to lose your mind. Uh, I know Coach Claflin, he's got a few years on me, and so he's a little farther out there than I am, but uh, I'm starting to fade a little myself. Uh, this spring, really, the uh, main focus right now is basketball and FFA, and after that, it's student council. Uh, how many of you guys, did you guys like the shirts this year for homecoming for football, the Star Wars one? So yeah, that was one of the big things we had to do was design those and get everything going with that. So everything that student council entails, finals, just making sure I graduate high school. Uh, I've maintained a 4.0 my entire high school career, so I'm hoping to keep that up, hoping to graduate with honors. Uh, scholarships, you all won't have to worry about that for a while, but scholarships. If you guys don't pay attention in English class, you better start because you're going to have to learn how to write, you're going to have to write well, and you're going to have to learn how to professionally send things off. Uh, I'm not trying to scare you, but boy, it'll take a lot of your time out, but it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you send off a piece of paper and they send you money. What's well, not to love about scholarships? <laughs> any other questions? Does anybody have any questions about high school, about athletics, about anything at all? Like between your eighth grade and your ninth grade year, the differences? Uh, eighth grade and ninth grade year. So uh, this is kind of more, This some of you younger kids might pay attention to this too, but as an eighth grader, I was scared to death to start high school because eighth grade, you know, you're kind of the top of the world in the middle school food chain. You know, I, I remember I was thinking, man, it doesn't get any better than this. And then you start thinking to high school and you're like, wait, now I'm going to be the bottom, even though I was at the top. High school is not that bad, honestly. Uh, some of the classes, it's a different environment, but the middle school changing classes, you know, that it helps a lot. It's not going to be as shell shocking as you think. Uh, the biggest thing is get involved with school organizations. Go do something. If you play football, keep doing it. If you do choir, keep doing it. And maybe even explore other options. Do something that you have no idea or don't think you're going to enjoy because you never know how that's going to work out. Uh, but yeah, freshman year, I mean, everyone at the high school is pretty cool. A lot of you guys already know them. A lot of you guys have siblings in high school, and so even though you may not get along with them that well, their friends are pretty cool. Uh, we're, all, we're all pretty accepting. Uh, there's never, I don't know if there's a rumor about hazing going on or anything among, nobody gets hazed at the high school. There aren't freshmen that 
go home crying, bullying. Uh, and if, if that is happening, then there's always people around that you can talk to. There's a friend around every corner. Uh, I'd say I won't be around as much, but if you ever need anything, feel free to come talk to me. I'm, I'm open. I'm an open book. I'll tell you whatever you need to know. I'll help you. It's always good to have friends high up in places. So if you ever need someone to talk to, hey, my door's always open. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for having me.